Hey everyone, thanks again for joining us for another uh, installment of our My Journey to Construction uh, video series here for BYF Indiana. We're excited to have you today. Uh, here with us is Daniel. I'm going to throw it over to him and let him tell us who he is and what he does. Hey guys, I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Matthew, for inviting me on here. Uh, my name is Daniel Brewer, as Matt said. Um, I am a safety advisor for a general contractor. Uh, we are based in Fishers and our, head, our headquarters is here in Fishers. Um, but I'm traveling all over the state visiting projects. As a safety advisor, I am primarily focused on keeping the job sites safe. And that involves a whole lot of stuff that I won't go into too many details, but from a high level, it's a lot of documentation on the front end to make sure that we're planning for the things we have going on on our job sites. Um, we are collecting all the documentation from subcontractors, owners, um, really all parties involved. Uh, and then uh, from there, just really making sure that that's executed in the field. And so going out to projects frequently, making sure that um, we are compliant with OSHA, owner's recommendations and requirements, um, all of that different stuff that comes together and make sure that we are really doing it the right way uh, when we're turning over our projects. Awesome, Daniel, thanks for that. And we're excited to, to hear from you today. Um, as you think about the, the career that you chose and, and specifically the construction industry and even safety, why is that the, the path that you've chosen for your career, whether it be safety in general or construction in general? Why is this where you've chosen to, to you know, make your money and spend your time? Yeah, I won't lie to you. It's, it was something that honestly I fell into. Um, I didn't know about all the opportunities that there were in construction, um, construction safety, but construction in general. Um, and it was just something where I actually met my present boss um, just by happenstance down in college. Um, we came across, uh, met each other during a project uh, for one of my classes and just things ended up working out. I had a great conversation about this company that I'm currently with, Meyer Nasium, um, and all of the opportunities here. And it led to me getting into the industry that I'm in, construction, uh, and then specifically being a safety advisor. Um, I'd say why I've loved it, though, is construction is just a fun industry to be in. You work with a lot of different personalities, a lot of different people, um, but it's all coming together for the same goal, and that's just to turn over a successful project uh, in a safe, high-quality manner. Um, and that's just, I try and play my piece in that, obviously, on the safety portion, making sure that we're compliant during all the work activities and everything that's being executed. But that's what I love about it, though, is that you have so many people coming together for that goal and so many different ways, so many different aspects and what we're getting involved with, with the different activities. Um, what I'm doing is completely different from what the person that might be sitting right behind me in the office is doing. And yet we might be still be working on the same project for that same goal. Um, as someone who played sports, high school, college, I've loved playing sports, watching them. Um, that's how I, I really feel like I relate to uh, my sports and my competitive drive is just through work. Um, I think it's just a lot of similarities there, just coming together as a team, making sure to get the win, which is successfully handing that project over to the owner. Yeah, I think that analogy is really uh, apt. I think a lot of people understand that competitiveness, the collaboration, the teamwork, um, and that turning that project over. Would you say that's your your favorite part of your job when it comes to day to day and and what you do? Um, on a regular basis? Is it that that collaborative nature, that working with other people? Is that your favorite part? I think that's definitely one of my favorite parts. I think one of my favorite parts too is that I feel like I learn something different every day. Um, I think it's an industry where you're always getting into, into different ways of building things, different ways of going about issues and figuring things out. Um, every day, I feel like I'm learning something different. And that's something that's important to me because I feel like there's nothing to master or there is really, it, there's no master of construction that knows everything. Um, you're constantly learning different things from different people. And I, I love that aspect of it. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite parts of my job. Yeah, our field is, uh, it's rapidly evolving, right? There's just mm -hmm. always something new that's on the horizon always. to be learning about. Um, thanks for sharing a little bit about where you are now and, and the job you do every day. Going back, where did you get your start? What was your first job ever? So my first job was back in high school. Um, and it was working at a party store, party supply store. And it's, it's funny, I look back and now it feels like it was forever ago. Um, but, you know, I, I appreciate my parents and how they have really raised me to always try and get into some kind of 
job. And I've always been someone who I've always wanted a job anyway. I didn't really need to get pushed. Um, but from 15 years old, I was working in that store. And from there, I've taken on, you know, different, all different kinds of stuff, Menards, uh, Marsh grocery stores when those were around. Uh, and now to be in where I'm at today, um, very different positions, obviously. But um, that's, again, I love the fact that I've gotten to learn something along the way in each position I've been in. Absolutely. You mentioned before that you were on sports team in high school and you, you had this job at the party supply store. What else was high school like for you? Kind of talk about maybe uh, your class load, like what kind of classes did you take? What was just, you know, what kind of student were you? What was your high school experience like? Sure. I'm trying to think of uh, what my classes were back in high school. Um, no, I think uh, a lot of it was just balancing it out, right, with sports and friends and work um, and school, obviously, uh, all of those being a priority, but also just being able to kind of cater to each one, depending on what time of the year it was. I remember summers, you know, working in football. Um, that was my whole day, pretty much. I'd get a little bit of time with friends on the weekends, but um, a lot of it was just the balance act of, of trying to balance out everything, but it was fun. I think just having the sports to where I had that competitive, that competitive kind of feel on things, um, having work where, you know, I got a little cash flow going, um, school wasn't as fun, but you know, uh, that's part of it too, right? It's trying to keep the grades up, uh, make sure that you're doing what you got to do. Did you, during high school, did you, um, did you get any construction specific credentials or certifications before you headed off to college? Did you know then that that was going to be your path or did you find it later in, in your education? I didn't, but I really wish I would have. Um, I think that something that I didn't realize when I was back in high school was all the building trades programs. And I'll say back when I was in high school, they weren't nearly as developed as what they are right now. Um, more than ever, I'm talking with construction school coordinators that are doing all this advanced, you know, using different technology, using different tools, different uh, machine shops that they have going on, um, different projects that they're working on building houses. Um, there was some of that back when I was in high school, but compared to what it is today, you know, the comparison isn't even close. They've gotten so advanced with some of the opportunities there. And so looking back at it, I really wish I would have done that because whether I would have ended up in construction or whether I would have ended up in an office somewhere or a manufacturing facility somewhere, just being able to know how to build something and what's involved in it, you get into it in all different kinds of ways, whether it's owning a house or just really whatever you come across, you always are coming across construction and building things and doing things different. But especially now being in the construction industry, I wish I would have gotten started, you know, 15 years old would have been amazing um, just to build up on that knowledge. And so I could just be on a more solid foundation today. Um, obviously you can always look back and wish you could do things different, but um, if I could give my 15 year old self some advice, I'd say, yeah, take advantage of those construction uh, trades program opportunities because the, the opportunities in the industry right now are endless. Yeah, I think that's so true. The opportunities are definitely endless with, with the technology piece, with the, the traditional skills piece. There's so many things that are out there that we need more and more folks to be doing and uh, to be doing it well. Um, yeah. You, you mentioned, um, I think some of the harder skills, you know, some of the actual learning to do some of the trades um, in your experience in the construction industry, though, what are some of the soft skills um, that you have found to be uh, the most valuable that you would say, you know, to a high school student who's thinking about construction? What are some of the other things that they really need to make sure they, you know, study up on or practice regularly to be successful in the industry? I think um, two things that I would consider to be one of the most um, just exponentially important characteristics of construction is being a strong communicator and being dependable. Um, when we're looking for guys to hire full time, uh, guys and girls, that's what we're looking for is people that are gonna be ultimately dependable, um, gonna be on time, gonna be hardworking. That's, that's so much of it right there. A lot of the other stuff's trainable. Um, learning how to build a certain thing in a certain way a lot of that's trainable that you pick up on and a lot of companies may do things a little different anyway to where they may want you to do something different once they bring you in anyway. Um, but things that you can't teach being on time and, and being disciplined and being hardworking, 
Um, those things are something that you train up, of course, but those are the skills that you really want to get going on early and that you want to show people that you have early because that's what general contractors, you know, looking at even a 17, 18 year old that we would be interested in hiring, that's what we want to see is that they're going to be dependable and they're going to be a good communicator. Yeah, I think that that's a pretty common theme in these uh, in this video series is a lot of folks are talking about how important it is just to to be there when you say you're going to be there, right? The classic mm. do what you say you're going to do um, and the dependability factor, it, it the reliability factor, it, it it's massive in the jobs that we're trying to get done and what we're trying to deliver to folks. Exactly. So we're wrapping up our time, Daniel. Um, one last question, and you kind of hit on this a little bit before, but I'll give you a, a chance maybe for one more a tidbit if you want to share it. Again, the audience for this video is most likely students that are currently in construction classes, so they're already thinking about construction. Um, to that group of folks, what would you share with them um, in terms of maybe why they should think, why they should really think the industry is for them, or, you know, one last piece of advice, kind of closing thoughts? Sure. So I'd say for my, my one last thing, I'd say uh, at the end of the day, do what you love. Um, try and find something that you're going to do what you love at 15 or 16 years old. Um, exploring the construction industry is amazing. I think who knows where you're going to be, you know, 20, 25. Of course, you don't know that right now, but I'm telling you as someone who is 26 in the construction industry, there's so many opportunities right now. Um, if you are interested, then I would just say, put some good effort into it, make some connections, find ways to make connections. Um, companies like ourselves, Meyer Nasium, um, there's so many companies out there also that are that are interested in knowing who you are and knowing what you're interested in and what your goals are for a career and us wanting to partner with you really to try and get you there. And so we can invest in you as you hopefully invest in us as well. Um, that's that's ultimately the goal. That's what we see from our owners investing in us so we can invest back in them and deliver a, an incredible project. And I think that's what you see a lot in the industry. Um, is that once you partner up and you have that teamwork mentality, um, it's just incredible to see the things that are able to get done. And so I think my, my tidbit for you would be, um, if that's something that you're interested in, it's in the construction industry, then give it your all right now. Um, don't, don't sell yourself short. Um, don't coast through it because you're doing yourself a disservice. And people are, are rooting for you right now. People are counting on you because our age, our age and our workforce in the construction industry is getting up there and we're ready for this next generation to really take charge and come in and do some big things. And so we're excited to see that. And we have all the faith in the world that you guys are gonna be rock stars in the industry and, um, and just keep with it, keep working hard. Awesome, Daniel. Thank you again for your time today. Thanks for speaking with these students virtually. Uh, we appreciate having Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I'm really happy to be here. So I appreciate your guys' time.